Hello everyone, uh, thanks for joining us this morning for those who did. Thanks King of Demons who is uh, a regular and is in the, in the chat room. Today I am joined by Tanya. Um, hello Tanya, could you briefly introduce yourself? Yeah, hello, I'm Tanya Floker. I'm, uh, it's the best way I'm involved with the uh, local club, the Ed and Brandy Gamers. Uh, we've recently put out a zine. And on my part, for my part, um, let me think, I've been gaming for 30 plus years, uh, designing games on the side as a hobby, and um, yeah, that's about it, just floating along like everyone does. <laughs> Great. Uh, there seems to be, yeah, so tell us about the, let, let's go, well, no, wait a second. First, my usual uh, icebreaking question. Uh, Café Rolis was born, it's a spin-off born out of the Panini situation, as we call it now, since we had a jammy on the show. Uh, what is your routine like uh, at the moment under the, the Panini circumstances that we are facing worldwide? My, my routine, as in... Yeah, what's what's a typical day for Tanya? Well, um, mainly being woken up by my youngest child at about half five in the morning, um, then dragging myself out of bed, uh, get like playing with them, getting them ready for the day, taking them into nursery, um, getting home, doing a, a few bits and bobs around the house before going and picking them up from nursery. Then it's Afternoon with kids, taking them out to park, maybe. Um, then making dinner. I'm a house queer, so uh, just getting getting the house in order. Then, then it's the bedtime routine for kids. That then takes it's, time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, like there's a witching hour is a very real thing from about four o'clock to five o'clock. It's pandemonium. And then... Yeah, dinner, bath time routine, and then I get a bit of time in the evening to myself and either time with my partner or time where, like, I've been doing some gaming online over, I, I, honestly, before the, the pandemic, I, I'd, I think 10 years ago, tried gaming over Skype and kind of enjoyed it, but not really, and then kind of just put it right on the back burner and thought it was something I'd never really get into. And then, obviously, necessity being the mother of all invention, uh, I've actually like started gaming quite a lot over the internet, and so do that some evenings. Uh, even even my own design games, uh, I always thought they'd never work online, and now I'm finding they they really really quite sing in some circumstances. So that's nice. And then when it's bedtime, it's bedtime. Collapse into bed, and then uh, do the same all over again the next day. That's the definition of a routine. So I've heard that question uh, in a lot of places recently. Do you think you'll you'll still will play online games uh, once, hopefully at some point we can resume uh, uh, games in person? Yeah, definitely, a hundred percent. The people I've met, people I've been gaming with, uh, I just wouldn't have had that uh, that same connection. Uh, we pl uh, like. Over the last year, played an entire campaign of The Watch, which is something I'd been wanting to do for quite a while and never got uh, the right group to get, like being in the right group to just play the whole campaign. And it was, re it was at first a little bit unusual for everyone because I think some people had more online experience and some less. But by the end of it, it just felt really tight and we all it, 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 we'd really got into a really good sort of rhythm with it and it, it had a lot of emotion and I find of other games as well it's just uh it's a, a lot of different techniques for online gaming uh for over over like a, a stream or compared with at the table so yeah I think I'll definitely keep it up uh, but I'll be glad to get back to some in-person gaming as well obviously so so the in the uh, the Inderber in the gamers are uh, was this something created recently online or was it something which already existed in the physical realm? It is it is it existed in the physical realm for five years. 
So it's it was born from there was a, there's another local games club called Orc, and some members at Orc uh, decided that they were going to play more sort of small press and indie games themselves. They couldn't quite get uh, get it working at the club, so they started their own sort of like uh, their own sort of meeting up at people's houses and in pubs themselves. And then they decided to open it up to other people to come along and they called it Open Saturdays. And it was been running, that was five years ago, almost exactly. And so, yeah, the that kit, that opened up and it, the, the whole principle was a bit like pick up games from Gen Con where you turn up, you don't know what's going to be played. You, you just know it's a one shot and you don't need any prep. And people would suggest games that they brought or like they'd, they'd work out who, who was interested in which games. They'd split off into different tables and they'd play a one shot. And that way, a lot of small press games would get some, some uh, attention and a little bit of focus where otherwise they, they might not, they might either just languish on someone's shelf unplayed or just be played once and forgotten about. So this would give them a bit more. That kind of reminds me of my my small experience attending events at the London Indie uh, RPG uh, Club. Uh, it's it, it's a it's, it's a it's a bit festive because instead of showing up for a specific table and you go to your table even if you're a cl in a club, you have this gathering at the beginning. So it really feels like a mini convention and you don't know what you're gonna play and people introduce uh, all their game. Uh, have you been in touch with them uh, in any way? Is there a network so, of indie RPG clubs uh, across the UK that I'm not aware of? Uh, so the the family the family tree, as it were, was that Glasgow Indie Gamers was founded by myself back in 2000 and I want to say nine 2010. Can't be exact on that. I'd have to go check. It's it's somewhere about there in my memory. Um, someone from London got in touch with us saying can we just do that down in London to which we said yes of course oh um, go for it <laughs> thank you for getting in touch but how, they, they asked how we did it and I, I literally said I turned up to a pub with a big pile of books and I advertised <laughs> I'd be there in advance and that's that's how we started um so and then from what I understand some people knew about the London Indie Gamers more than the Glasgow one because the Glasgow one sort of went for a couple of years and then a lot of us moved to different places so it fizzled out. Um, and so the, the sort of Open Saturdays in Edinburgh had some level of inspiration from the London group that was already running and then that uh, some people actually moved up from London to Edinburgh and that's when it be really became Edinburgh Indie Gamers and um, so yeah, there's a family tree there between all the groups. Um, I'm glad we could re uh, first of all, I I learned something today because I was really not aware of that. And second, I'm glad that we set the record straight and now we can say, no, 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 this is not a London, uh, you know, good old London Westminster invention. It was created uh, in Glasgow. So uh, I'll make sure to raise that as often uh, as possible. So it's fine, it's fine. five years, uh, does that mean that you, you build up to a, a scale as a group uh, big enough to maybe run activities at conventions and this sort of things uh, as well? We, we, we could do it. So club meetings can range from uh, like having just one, one game's worth of people, like three or four people, up to having three or four tables of people, depending on on just the whims of whims of people's calendars. Uh, so, but at the moment, we're definitely at, at quite strong, I would say. We're, we're running games at, that are, oh, like not just our regular sort of open Saturdays, which are twice a month, but we're also running lots of campaign games at the moment that have sort of branched out from the club. And that's, some of that's been in part due to, to our, the, the, the pandemic, uh, moving online a lot more has meant that we're talking a lot more in between set in between sort of um, club sessions, 
and we're putting together games on the side a lot more often. So at the moment, yeah, we did. We're already talking about going to to next year's sort of conventions with a little table to hand out our our zine and see what people make of it. So does Dean tell me about that? What what is it exactly? Was the the one that I saw kickstarted the the very first one or the part of a series? And uh, what does it contain? And is it available yet? <laughs> okay, so um, what happened is as we all knew Zine Quest was coming up, and I've got a a, a long background in Zine and pamphlet production. Uh, I've uh, uh, sort of like been involved with Annika scene distros and uh, political organizations that, that made quite a lot of pamphlets and zines in their time. And I'd also been involved with making a, a zine for the Zine Quest One. And so I sort of suggested there was talk called oh, Zine Quest coming up, and we were all getting quite excited about it because it's sort of like uh, indie game Christmas. And uh, we were like, okay, so why don't we make one was thrown into the mix. And so we all talked about what would it contain? How would we do it? And we sort of chatted back and forth. And, and basically we realized we've got so ma many people with sort of like that design games at the club. So many people who have like really keen insight on different aspects of gaming and people with just like real creative talents, like poets and artists that we, um, all pulled our, our sort of knowledge and resources and abilities and decided let's launch it, we'll do it for, for Kickstarter. And it, just as, as this was going on, our regular venue uh, for our open Saturdays had to close down because of the pandemic. So we were already talking about looking for a venue with better accessibility, with uh, for for all sorts of different reasons it was quite loud it had a step going in that was that, that didn't have a ramp all the time a few other few other things that were were sort of like we were thinking about moving anyway and so we decided this is a perfect opportunity to raise the funds that we need because edinburgh is uh because of the the festival venue costs are through the roof uh so finding places as difficult enough as it is with it, without that extra financial burden. So we put together a zine, threw it out to the world, and it's, I think, been quite a good success. Um, we've already sent to our backers all the physical rewards that we put out, so the zines are printed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, so backers have got them already hopefully if the postal service is working which in some parts of the world is touch and go at the moment but uh fingers crossed and so the next stage is we've we're going to be putting out uh copies of the zine free to local stores as a, a basically to promote the club so people in and around edinburgh can pick it up for for free from their friendly local game stores or little indie haunts uh, but we also, as part of the, the campaign, we did a part, one of the pledge levels was for community copies, which is quite a common thing in a lot of, uh, sort of indie game circles to have like so many free copies that you can hand out. Now, most, most games, uh, someone th th that's done by PDF, it's a free PDF. But um, we've decided that on the 28th of this month, so uh, a few days from now, um, we're going to uh, put the PDF out completely free. It's going to be available through Itch, and we're going to promote it wherever we can. And folks can just pick up the zine in PDF format for free. And it has three games in it. It has a bunch of excellent articles, some wonderful poetry, and beautiful art. So it's 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 great value at free, <laughs> and. Um, the physical copies, the community copies are actually physical in nature. We're, we're going to send out, uh, I think we've got 66 community copies printed. So they're intended for anyone who uh, is on low income, is unwaged, or has some other, other stuff going on in their life that means that they couldn't really divert funds 
over to to getting games uh, all the time or that they've got quite a tight budget on that front and they can just get in touch no questions asked just say i'd like a community copy sent to this address anywhere in the world and we'll send it need to work hard out to you know, to do community copies uh, with my own game. Uh, I'm new with it, so I need to, to find out how these things work. What, what I really like in what you're describing is that, uh, a bit like my shows, you, you're not doing a zine which is strictly adventures or strictly even games. Uh, you got poetry and art in it. And I, I always thought that what I find lovely with tabletop role-playing games is that it opens you, you up to a number of different things, music, design, and interactions with people. So it's it's cool, the idea of having something which is, um, uh, what's the right word? Uh, not multimedia, but uh, ranges in a, in different practices of, of and different crafts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I definitely see role-play games as a form of art and uh, we definitely situate that the scene within that sort of uh, within scene culture with within the sort of like the the combination of different outlooks of our members like the, the influences that are taken by by like just in the zine alone um, like there's a game inspired by the film Wings of Desire there's oh wow uh, yeah yeah uh, like it's it's uh, like a uh, by um, Gregor Hutton, who designed 316, Carnage Amongst the Stars. If you've played that one, it was a, a pretty good game. Yeah, I'm just flicking through it now and just <laughs> having a look to see what's in. And that that's sort of like you're playing, you might be angels, and it's sort of like got a lot of emotional resonance going on. Um, we've got uh, random tables for called Tables for Troubled Hearts and Unquiet Minds. And it's a sort of like a random encounter table, but it's stuff like um, stumbling into a chance encounter with your your former lover and then new partner, and it's asking questions about like how it makes you feel and what what sort of uh, emotional impact it has on you, or uh, when you lie awake at night and can't get to sleep, what pre what's weighing heavily on your mind, that kind of thing. Uh, so a, a bit of a twist on on the usual game game material. We got in the yeah. chat room, King of Demons is asking if you are planning, that's a bit ambitious, a audiobook version of the scene in some way. Uh, I mean, it could be nice to have some poet poetry read out and uh, this sort of things. Um, I don't know if we've got the, the ability to do that. I'd have to I'll bring it up with the club and see if folks fancy that. I know that we're doing, um, when we release the files, we've got a reader-friendly plain text version. So if you 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 sort of uh, just upload that into your or, or add on your your sort of reader programs, it should be read out to you, but be quite mechanical, I would imagine, or, or mm. at least not not as flowing as the the poetry wouldn't come across the same way. Definitely, it's um, for accessibility purpose, uh, I, I yeah. assume. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, you've got a convention online an event coming uh what is that and when is it happening so um on the 19th of june uh what we've done is to go with the zine uh as a thank you to to backers uh at the community level and up we're holding uh, a sort of very mini sort of small we call it a mini convention. It's it's more like a, a sort of series, a day, a day, day it is a day long series of events on a Discord server. That so, qualifies as a convention online. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it does under under pandemic conditions. So, uh, we we've got um we're going to be playing a lot of the games out of the zine, and a few other local locals are going to be running different games, and. Uh, we're going to be having a couple of workshops, one on how to start your own indie games club, like using the experiences we have here in Edinburgh to try and sort of like open up a discussion with people from other parts of the world and see if we can get a few more indie games clubs up and running over the next year. And uh, a sort of storytelling and poetry workshop. Uh, so again, that's bringing in the sort of like different artistic uh, fans that make up our our club. Amazing. By the way, I'm looking just an announcement out there for people. I'm looking for guests, but 
I uh, for uh, an upcoming event in November, but I will need them to be able to be fluent in French to be able to to be part of a panel in French. So, uh, if you know anyone, Tanya uh, from Edinburgh or elsewhere in Scotland, feel free to let me know. I'd be very interested. I'm trying to help the organization of this France-based thing to to reach out outside of uh, uh, its borders. So. It's uh, it's out there. So, uh, will there be also game sessions? Uh, can people sign up, or does that work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll, it'll just be sort of a there will be sign up sheets going up later this week. Um, it'll be, uh, I think there's let me think, see, seven games over the course of the day, seven or eight games, um, and it's all 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 mainly there's mainly by local designers. I'm running a game that I've designed. Uh, Gregor Hutton's running a couple of games. Uh, who else is running on the day? Oh, my brain's gone dead. Let me just take a look. I might be running something. Paris Gondo if there's room for for me. Yeah. So I need to look uh, that uh, up. Uh. I was going to, to suggest we've actually got a space for pickup games. And so it might be good if you if you've got your like you've got Paris Gondo on, on hand there. That means if I, I don't know how busy it'll be. This is the problem at the moment. We've not got the sign up sheets out, and I, I'm yeah. feeling like maybe we'll only have a few people that actually want to play on the day, or maybe we'll be inundated with folks. <laughs> so I I don't know. Uh, yeah, let, I've got all the games in front of me now because doing this online, I can just go straight to the server. So yeah, we're going to be playing. Uh, there's a there's another zine quest zine by by some local local designers and and print and and actually they've got their own little uh press running at the moment uh and so we're, there's a game of the goblin manor of anstruther mog which is going to be about a sort of osr -y adjacent game about uh goblins who've been living in this uh big posh house uh big mansion for a while and <laughs> the things exciting. that they're getting up to yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that's sort of a, a sort of kind of fun, but also a little bit grim uh, sort of looking game. Uh, there's going to be Winter's Respite, which is a game about um, wanting to be selected to go into Wicker Man to keep to uh, and burnt alive uh, or <laughs> <Wow>. not. <laughs> uh, and, and, but it's, it's sort of modern day and it's more about the, the sort of shame in small shame and 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 uh, secrets within small communities. Oh, uh, cool. I love that. I, I love yeah. the the original Wicker Man. Uh, it's a, it's a brilliant movie. I find so, but yeah, taking the twist that you are not you're not a vic well you're not you're a victim in some way. I imagine, but you're 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 proactive towards the act rather than uh, being tricked into being the the martyr and that uh it's an interesting take yeah you might be shamed into being the martyr rather than uh rather than tricked but yeah that's that's kind of the, the take on it there's um that the game i mentioned about angels within or, or are they angels um within edinburgh called realization dawning um We've got. Let's see what else there is. Oh, some one of our, our local uh, local club members is going to be running Honey Heist just for a bit of light relief because a lot of the games are pretty he heavy. So we've tried to make sure there's a few few more comic games like peppered amongst it. Uh, one of those uh, in the house solo is nudge nudge wink wink maybe based on Home Alone. Okay. Where you're you're in the ho you're in the house alone at Christmas, and the the damp rascals. Wink, are... wink. Yeah. <laughs> Finding yeah. the serial numbers. The, the 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 damp rascals are trying to break in, and you have to stop them. Um, there, yeah. Uh, uh, Joe Prince, who's a sort of older games designer from over Glasgow way or, or West Coast now, he's great Glasgow, is um, going to run, run a game called Hounds on the Hunt. And I've not seen the blurb for that yet, so I'm, I'm kind of intrigued at what that will be. But it's using, I think, a, a, a highly modified version of Dogs in the Vineyard. So uh, we'll, see, we'll see how that goes. Uh, so what about your game? Wh which one oh, is my yours? One's Winter's Respite is mine. 
Um, but it's actually based on, uh, there's another club member, Martin, hi Martin, who wrote a game called um, We Dance Till Dawn. And so basically my game is a sort of hack slash complete redesign slash uh, companion piece to his game. So uh, I don't feel I could entirely call it my game on that front. Although the design is is so is so different now that that we kind of have agreed the different games, but well, that, yeah, the the original author just needs to come up with a sort of forged in the dark, carved in Brindlewood, this sort of label, so you can put it, it on your your own uh, extension. Yeah, oh no, I I I think we both like we both got his his game uses dice, has got a different focus, has got like. The setup is similar. Um, my dice game is diceless. It's it's got a different focus in the story. Like it is, but this is the nice thing about the local games club. We all bounce ideas off each other. Of course, like, yeah. I, I played Martin's game, and then I, I like months later was like, actually, I've got this idea for a game using that premise, and then I was able to go to Martin, and we were talking out stuff. Um, we even talking at one one point about like. Uh, publishing it together in one volume, both games. So that might happen, or we might do it separately. We're not sure. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. There's a whole bunch of games, and uh, yeah, the the workshops we've got. I mentioned the the storytelling and poetry one. I think that's going to be amazing. Daru, who's running it, is wonderful. Uh, like. Gaming with Daru is amazing because you'll be in a game and he'll be creating poetry in 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 the gaming world as wow. he goes, and uh, occasionally like drawing and uh, doing artwork uh, that goes into the game. So um, he's really got this amazing. He's got this amazing energy and uh, amazing outlook that I think will really translate well in a workshop. So yeah. Anyway. That Everyone at the brilliant. Edinburgh game, game this is amazing. <laughs> so do you have a, a lot of other games? Have you been designing games yourself for, for five years or even more? Oh, me? Uh, I've been designing games like... The ones that are any good for about a decade or so, maybe a bit longer. And since I was about... As soon as I've been gaming, it was so, like I can remember being... 10 9 10 like when i first started ha like the first game i played was advanced fighting fantasy but before that i'd been playing the solo fighting fantasy books but i remember when i started playing advanced fighting fantasy in my granny's bedroom with my cousin my big cousin ran it for me um i was absolutely hooked and just started hacking and designing and running stuff um from that point on so. It's interesting. It seems I I don't know how much it's the case in uh, in the US, but in the UK, I hear from a lot of people who started out with fighting fantasy books, solo games, and and now solo games are having a resurgence with journaling games and so on. It's quite fascinating. Yeah, um, definitely. I, I, I like it's kind of there's a sort of stereotype. At least I don't know if it's still considered a stereotype, but it's like. Gamers in America started on D&D. &D. Gamers in the UK started with fighting fantasy or Warhammer fantasy. That's, and I, I, I'm totally in the, that, that sort of stereotype. My first like actual multiplayer role play game was advanced fighting fantasy. My second one was Warhammer fantasy role play. Uh, I played AD&D, AD&D first edition, third, and so that's I I just don't think D and D rooted itself in in my gaming mind in the same way as I find it does talking with folks from over in the states of a same age where they've sort of like came in from the D and D side of it more. Yeah, and, and often even people who don't play it anymore they tend to uh, I, I, they tend to structure their discourse in opposition to it, which is interesting because it's not like oh you're coming from outside of it you're still in reaction to that that big thing uh while uh, yeah. on the in france and belgium also it, it was not that D, D was not as big at least at least when i started and uh, a few people started with 
uh, fighting fantasy books or, or others, which uh, I believe are German in origin, which is the, the Dark Eye, the Schwartz Auger. They had their own line of fighting fantasy-like uh, books. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's funny to see how, how, things, how things shapes up. Uh, are there are there games you find especially interesting? I, I mean, there probably are, but what would be the game that be on your own that from that from Scotland and people should go check out uh, immediately? Oh wow! Um, I'm trying to think. What's it depends. It depends what games you've played up to now. Um, at the moment, uh, I'm really liking. Let's think out of Zine Quest, uh, The Gardener is Dead uh, was really good. Uh, I think that was a, it's a bit like, um, think of it as a bit like influenced by A Quiet Year, mm -hmm. or The Quiet Year, or um, yeah, that kind of, the idea is you've just taken over as a gardener. Well, you've got a collective character who is the gardener, who's taken over uh, uh, the stewardship of a garden. And you create the bounds of that garden, what's happened, but the garden is also haunted. No, and nice. it might be, it, yeah, it's, it might be a, a sort of literal haunting in some ways, but also a more sort of like... Uh, a metaphor for what's ha happening around the gardener and you you use a deck of cards to to add in elements to the story and and run it up until you, you, all you know at the start is that you have the gardener and that at the end of the game they are going to die so uh i think that's really good i think uh there's also um and I actually think in the, the Edinburgh the Gamer Zine, we've got a, a tarot and tapestry game, which is, uh, I think, really quite something. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think it's uh, like uh, a really, really amazingly designed game. And it's sort of for something like here and now. And oh, let's think, there's just so much going on in Scotland. Uh, you've kind of blindsided me. If you go back maybe 10, 15 years, like... Uh, I really like love the sixteen Carnage Amongst the Stars, uh, Solipsist, but, but that's quite old now as well. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. Uh, also, all the games that I've mentioned already. <laughs> so I'm I'm not <laughs> entirely go. aware of uh, in terms of publishing what is going on in in Scotland, but uh, with the zine as a starting point and what you were saying about eventually publishing something together with that other game designer, uh, do, do you think that there would be... Uh, this seems like there's a lot going on, so uh, at this point, at this point, do you think there would be a opportunity to, to publish something, to do something like, uh, I'm thinking in the US, the San, San, Rena, sorry, San Gennaro co-op, and, uh, and not just doing one of zine, but having a regular publication and uh, band together to promote each other's work. Uh, I think that, well, that has happened in the past. Uh, Collective Endeavor, um, which was a sort of past, they didn't make a zine, but they would help each other out in their designs, was a sort of collective of designers and, and artists doing just that. And the sort of legacy of that today is that we see um, like John Hodgson, uh, who does handiwork games? Who was our was, last guest, I think. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And he, like, John was part of that sort of movement. Um, Gregor Hutton, who's still kicking about doing doing games for other companies that I've mentioned, he was part of that. Joel Prince was part of that. Like, the, they're sort of like the old last wave. And so, this current wave of, of sort of designers that are coming up at the moment. They're making their own small presses, um, like the, the 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 I mentioned the the Goblin Manor of Anstro Mansion of Anstro the Mog and um, Manor. Uh, they've got their own uh, risograph printer, and they're sitting there like doing art, doing lay, doing design, and reaching out to other other like designers to to sort of band together and, and make stuff, and so. Whether we do something like the the the, the sort of like that sort of co-op 
regular zine or whether we just help each other out and give each other a leg up. I'm not sure how that will work. And I feel like if we try and impose an idea, it, it, it just won't be the same as whatever grows naturally from yeah, below. Of course. Also, do you have a because recently uh, I too it was very handy when you wanted to to have a feel of a specific scene on Twitter. Uh, there's the the hashtag RPG C. There's uh, RPG Latam now. Uh, is there one for Scotland for someone that would wish to to stay on, on track on all of that? I don't think so. Um, Should maybe be. be useful, <laughs> but it's it's kind of like this. I, I don't know if it's. Like I think the the whole idea with RPGC and and Latin America and it, it, all that is is these are um, areas that are traditionally traditionally haven't had any focus at all. Whereas I feel like Scottish designers have have punched above their weight a lot of the time and have opportunities being based in Scotland that haven't in the past been afforded to other parts of the world. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, so I feel like, may, personally, maybe someone else will start it and it'll be a great success, but I don't know if that would be what's needed. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think, I, th I think like, get, getting small clubs up and running, because I, I think get, getting actual clubs to play small press games, even if they're not new clubs, like, getting, getting sort of like a, like... I feel like the the big the big name trad games are expensive and put a lot of expectation about what a game has to be in place, whereas uh, a lot of small press stuff doesn't doesn't set that expectation. It just says this is what this game is, and gaming can be a, a big wide variety of of different experiences and feelings and, and sort of. Can can range in, in in sort of its sort of emotional impact and its its sort of tone and depth. So, just getting people m trying out this some of the other games that they might not have, might not see as sort of like the big games that they first run across is probably going to do the best. That's probably the best thing to do here locally, and and that will ripple out into the world. Yeah, it, it also I think it also harkens back. We were talking about playing online, and what I I really enjoyed and really I, I always been quite curious of trying different systems. But the the bottleneck for that I was always been to find other people curious about them, or people for running to running these games for me because I'm I'm terrible at learning a game through text and then trying to run it. So uh, having the opportunity online to to interact with uh, people from the indie scene, uh, it, it's a it's a virtual circle because on one hand you play more of them, it's easier to find them via the gauntlet, via clubs like yours moving online, and then you start playing them, you start buying some or getting more aware of them, and you got itchio, and and you you just want to play more, 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 and more. Yeah, and and it's a bit like um. Everyone's got a different taste in cinema, I say. And even even myself as one person, like I I like want to see a comedy one time and uh, something something like dramatic another time. And so having games that are catered to that the different tastes and so that you know what what you're sort of what kind of thing you're going into. I I often say that like I have to be in the right mindset before I sit down to watch. One of David Lynch's thrillers, like yeah. one of his uh, surreal psychological thrillers, and I, I kind of feel it's the same with a lot of games. I have to. Uh, there's some games that I would, if I was just in, uh, sort of, I was tired and ran down. Or if I was quite feeling like I needed a light pick me up, I, I wouldn't play. <laughs> Whereas I, I might think that they're amazing games, but they're just not for me at that moment, and so. Yeah, that's the thing. You Getting can be, are... you can be, you can feel available or in the mood for something like. I sincerely miss watching more, uh, for lack of better word, uh, RNSA movies. But I don't feel available, both in time and emotionally, to to engage with those. And I don't have also the, I mean, the, 
I miss the days when I was able to walk. Uh, I lived briefly in Paris and I could walk acro across a few streets and there would be a small cinema and I would just enter the place and I was available to do that. And you have the big screen and it's cheap and it's approachable. And nowadays it's it's all deal finding a babysitter, being available, being, okay, I'm dealing with the, the situation right now and all the, the difficulties. I'm not sure I really want to engage with... Uh, uh, being a Jewish family during the occupation of Italy, uh, which uh, it's a great movie, but uh, yeah, not right now. Uh, or at least it needs to be. And yeah, watching it on Netflix, it's not the same either. But uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't play 10 Candles in a Heartbeat <laughs> right now. I would love to play it at some point, but uh, I don't feel like it. I, I think yeah. what, what you're telling me also, it really, it's been... Uh, a, a plan of mine and uh, Persephilia, my wife, to visit Edinburgh uh, at some point. We have not yet. We, we've passed through Edinburgh to have some holidays in Scotland, but we didn't stay there. But uh, not only I want to come now, but now I want to show up uh, at the club and have a game. Because you can. Because you can show up and uh, it's, uh, it's on the fly. It's on the go. You don't need to plan. Uh, you don't need to find a table with your D&D &D group where they got a spot and it's part of a small arc and do you have the right class? You just show up and uh, listen to the pitches and uh, and go for what you want. Uh. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. And then for people who are, are sort of passing through, you can you can pop in. And But for people more sort of that hear regularly, um, it means that we can then get to know one another and, and learn one another's tastes yeah. and learn one another, get to know one another's people and make friends and, and just like support, like it's been really good over the last year for supporting one another, but also, like I say, for just uh, spawning those uh, either campaigns with more depth or more, just longer, longer gap games campaigns, like ongoing series stuff. It's, it's really nice that way. Excellent. Uh, the the chat room is ablaze with people saying how gorgeous uh, Edinburgh is and that the, it was the the most beautiful place they they ever visited. So yes, I need I need to go there. Uh, although maybe I need my son to stop using a stroller because I believe it can get quite steep for strollers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I yeah, cannot no, wait to it's, it's, sit it's... in Edinburgh, play some games of yours uh, with a uh, fried Mars bar uh, on a plate uh, next to me. So, uh, yeah, where, where can people? Well. Uh, we, we getting? Uh, I mean, is there something? I'm running out of questions. Is there something you want to to showcase that we have not yet? Um, I'm not entirely certain. Um, uh, effectively, just. Take a look for us online, um, get in touch, especially if you're going to be passing through Edinburgh. Um, and no, I think that's about everything. Uh, that we, that I, I do a bunch of other things on the side in game, like games wise, but um, I don't think any of them are really that relevant here at the moment. Uh, I help run a November games, well, I help keep an itch page running for a November Games Chan that runs alongside uh, NaNoWriMo called Naga Demon. And so look for that hashtag closer to the time. And yeah, I, I help mod moderate um, the uh, RPG creation Reddit. So if anyone's interested in games design, come, come hang out there. It's actually the nicest place on Reddit, I believe. Uh, so we don't, we don't, uh, we don't allow any BS to to take over there. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Amazing. Well, I will include links to all of that in the description of the episode, as well as a link to my own game, Paris Gondo, the life saving magic of inventoring. Yeah, the, the art of the, the plug. Uh, so when is the convention and where can people uh, join and sign up since the, those are about to, to be opened? Um, I think with the, conven the, the convention itself is being limited to people in and around Scotland or people who backed the, the um, Kickstarter. So if anyone listening is in those sort of areas, uh, you can just contact us through um, Edinburgh Indie Gamers 
uh, or myself, uh, and we'll hop you onto the, the Discord server. And as for the zine, it's same same for getting hold of the zine. Just uh, there's also I'll I'll throw over a link for you to put in the the wee yep. blurb for where you can pick that up and where you can contact uh, an, another member of the club who can sort that out for you. Amazing. Well, the the chat room uh, wishes you good luck. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure everything will run smoothly. I, I cannot wait to to participate in, in some fashion. Uh, thanks everyone again in the chat room for for joining. Uh, yeah, see you next week. I don't remember who's my guest because my uh, I call my calendar at the moment the Schrodinger calendar because it keeps changing as lockdowns are lifted but not quite and families wishing to visit us abroad so sorry if it impacts the the or regular the the show is but uh, yeah difficult times I'm, I'm sure you will all understand thanks again tanya uh for for joining us and uh yeah uh, good luck with with all your project uh, i look forward to hearing more from designers in scotland going strong yeah th thank you very much for having me on and for helping promote our club and our what we've got going on it's really been amazing thanks well, the pleasure is all mine cheers everyone bye